Thank you. And now I'm, uh, I'm with distinguished guests from all over the Asia Pacific region. And I'm happy to, to welcome them on this panel to talk about the state of the APAC startup ecosystems. And uh, I will ask each of you to introduce yourself to our audience, uh, starting with uh, Minister Uno. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gautier. Um, hi, Pa Edwin and Mr. Quat. Uh, my name is uh, Sandy Uno, and I work at the Ministry for Tourism and Creative Economy uh, of the Republic of Indonesia. I've been in my current position since uh, December of last year, and currently I oversee the revival of the tourism and creative economy sectors uh, during the pandemic, which uh, approximately covers around 34 million uh, workers. Uh, previous to this, my positions was vice governor of the uh, capital city of Jakarta. Uh, and before that, I was uh, an entrepreneur uh, in the investments and finance sector. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister Uno, to be, for being with us. And it's always good to have an entrepreneur with us. Mr. Edwin Chow, please uh, welcome. Thank you, JF. Uh, good to be with you again. Um, and uh, uh, hello to uh, Minister uh, Uno and uh, Mr. Quat. Uh, good to see you again as well. Uh, I'm Edwin Chow. I represent uh, Enterprise Singapore. Uh, a uh, government agency of uh, Singapore that, whose mandate is to help uh, Singapore-based enterprises to grow uh, both uh, here and overseas. And of course, uh, startups, uh, tech startups uh, are an important segment of uh, uh, those companies. And I look forward to uh, hearing and exchanging views with everyone on this panel. Thank you. Thank you, Edwin. And uh, also Mr. Quat, who is joining us from Vietnam today. Okay. Thank you, Sir Chino. Uh, hello, my college from uh, Indonesia, Singapore, and uh, the United States. Uh, my name is Pham Hong Kwat. I'm working for the uh, National Agency for Technology Commercialization and Development under the Ministry of Science and Technology of Vietnam. We are um, uh, in charge of uh, building the national startup ecosystem in Vietnam and uh, support for startup to integrate it into the regions and in the world. So um, I would like to share some uh, information about the, our ecosystem and the uh, promising uh, project to uh, support for startup in the academic uh, um, and to overcome the uh, COVID uh, pan pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Quat. And we're all here today to talk about, you know, celebrate what the exciting things that have happened in our ecosystems in the last year, year and a half. And, you know, we've been talking about the global startup revolution, a startup genome since you know 2011. And last year, I feel like it really came true. And I'd like each of you to share one exciting thing that happened in your ecosystem in the last year or two years that you want to celebrate. And let's start with Minister Uno. Well, it's uh, it's been a very difficult uh, time uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, and I have been really focusing on each specific subsectors. We have 17 subsectors in the creative economy, but if you would ask for one particular success, I would say, the emergence of uh, the development of applications and games uh, in the Indonesia startup uh, scene. Uh, we are seeing that uh, startup capital investments uh, during the first half of 2020 uh, is the largest in Southeast Asia. Uh, and Jakarta is now second in the world's top emerging startup ecosystems. And with the merger between Gojek and Tokopedia, we're, we're actually uh, creating uh, one uh, humongous uh, entity that would uh, provide a much 
more developed ecosystems uh, and uh, providing a better runway for startups in terms of uh, development in particular within the human capital. So we're focusing on jobs uh, and how this startup ecosystems could create jobs. And uh, this one or two exciting things that really kept me awake at night, uh, JF. And I think um, the, uh, the amount of investment that is being poured in the uh, ecosystems uh, has been very encouraging. Uh, the uh, decisions of some of the global players to stay invested during the pandemic in Indonesia uh, really created uh, one uh, very optimistic uh, view of the uh, ecosystems going forward. Thank you so much, Minister Uno. And Edwin, tell us one thing that happened in your ecosystem during the pandemic. And I know Singapore has also boomed during the pandemic going to be a hard choice. <laughs> yes, thanks, uh, Jeff. Um, I, I, firstly, I think this is a fantastic topic uh, because uh, the pandemic has been too much focus on the downside, the bad news, and you know, um, condolences to everyone who's uh, lost uh, friends and families. Uh, but I think if there's one thing that's worth celebrating, uh, you know, the startup ecosystem, uh, not just in Singapore, but as you've just heard from around Southeast Asia has really boomed uh, last year. Uh, in particular, uh, the the uh, venture capital investments that's uh, that that, were taken, that took place last year, uh, and the fact that uh, in Singapore we now have uh, six uh, newly minted uh, unicorns in 2021. So in the depths of the pandemic, uh, there are six startups now to join uh, 11 others. So we now have 17 uh, sort of uh, homegrown or Singapore nurtured uh, unicorns. Uh, and uh, they were part of the uh, 5.3 billion Singapore dollars of venture funding that was recorded in the first half of this year. Uh, this is like a 50% increase over the same period last year. And what gives me a, a great optimism for the future is the majority of these deals, uh, these are 355 deals, are actually in the uh, sort of seed series A stage, uh, sort of early to mid stage, which bodes well because uh, the momentum that's created today uh, I think will see us through uh, resulting in uh, more uh, successful exits, unicorns in the coming years, uh, and uh, more jobs and economic value created for, for people here in Singapore and the region. Thank you so much, Edwin. Mr. Kwat, tell us one thing that you're excited about. Yeah, thank you. One thing I would like to share concerning the uh, project supporting the uh, National Startup Ecosystem, uh, so-called 844 project, the first concept of startup uh, was introduced into Vietnam by the uh, pilot project of the Mission of Science and Technology in uh, 2013. Uh, it was the uh, technology commercialization following the Silicon Valley model in Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam Silicon Valley of Viet or VSV project in short. Uh, this pilot project introduced and uh, developed the uh, model of the British accelerator in Vietnam. At that time, we could not translate exactly the meaning of the term the business accelerator in Vietnamese. After three years from that time, we uh, had a small network of the British accelerators besides the traditional business incubators in Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Da Nang City, and some big universities. We also received the uh, support from Vietnam Finland Innovation Partnership Program, some experts from Silicon Valley, Jumpstart Program, uh, Graveland State University in Ohio State, USA, and from Helsinki Anto University, Finland, came to help us to uh, design the national support uh, uh, program. We are uh, Proposed the initiative on a national program supporting the startup ecosystem. The uh, Prime Minister approved this uh, initiative in 2016 uh, by decision number 844. And the terms of uh, startup ecosystem was officially introduced in Vietnam. Uh, this program focusing uh, is focusing on the enhancement of the BA network capacity and the uh, promotion of the startup cultures in the country. 
the Prime Minister also announced his slogan, Startup Nation, in the years of 2016. And uh, after three years running the 844 project, the landscapes and the positions of the national startup ecosystem was uh, improved radically. Uh, Vietnam jumps from number three <clears throat> to number six in Asian uh, national ecosystems after Singapore and uh, Indonesia under uh, the assessment of the uh, regional agency. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwat. And this, 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 this level of success has come with a lot of hard work from each of you and your teams. Minister Uno, tell us one policy you know, that we can share with our ADNs today of policymakers all over the world. One policy that you're really proud of having uh, implemented. Well, we have instituted, uh, JF, several policies uh, in the past uh, 12 months. And if we can name one policy that has been really helpful in the ecosystem, uh, I would probably choose a program called Backup, which stands for Baparekra for Startup. It's a program that uh, incubates 200 Indonesian startups divided into three levels, growth rate, accelerations, and scale up. These startups are given various training and mentoring and meet with, and, and we arrange matchmaking with venture capital to open corporations uh, opportunities. We have a large market um, and we wanna make sure that these startups would be able to access the market, access the capital, access the human capital aspects of uh, incubation. So there are uh, training of trainers, so TOT for founders, practitioners. And uh, I'd like to share their four top finalists of each city. And these are the biggest city in Indonesia, namely Jakarta, Surabaya, and uh, Medan and Makassar. For Jakarta, we have Calm, which is a platform to provide access to mental health professionals. During COVID, mental health become such a huge issue. And I would say that this calm would uh, be eventually a decacorn because 20% of, uh, I guess, uh, people around the world have been identified as having some sort of like a mental uh, health situations that uh, needs to be addressed uh, from a very mild one to a severe one. From Surabaya, there is a Indo get job, and jobs are very, very uh, difficult to get during the pandemic. So these uh, applications help job seekers uh, create a widest opportunities for them to choose. Uh, from Medan, we have uh, La Copi, which is a marketplace for green coffee beans. I'm sure JF, you like coffee, and this connects producers with coffee processors. And then from Makassar, uh, finally, it's uh, Rekan Legal, which is one-stop platform to understand the regulations and the legality of business. Um, and okay. this backup has been ongoing for the last uh, 12 uh, months, but this has been uh, one of the program that we, together with uh, the digital talent program, uh, we provide Android uh, facilitations and web development and also certificates to creative actors in applications and game developer subsectors. And we have close to uh, 1,550 uh, developers that have been aided by this program. Jeff, thank you. Thank you so much. Edwin, one policy that you're proud of, and I know you're, you're very active on that front. So. Yeah, so I'm going to cheat. That. I'm going to I'm going to cheat a bit, JF, and and, and uh, I'll I'll use the one policy which covers like seven maybe. But um, now jo jokes aside, it's uh, we have a, a a program that we've been running uh, called the Startup SG uh, for for almost four or five years now, and this is a a comprehensive uh, program that uh, incentivizes uh, at the very beginning, you know, first time founders uh, to encourage more uh, Singaporean and Singapore based founders to start companies. Uh, there are grant programs to help the speed up the commercialization of research, uh, where we give up to three quarters of a million dollars to support the uh, first prototype development of uh, what we call deep tech startups. Uh, we have a, a, a co-investment program under Startup SG Equity, where we match a dollar for every dollar that a startup uh, manages to raise in the private sector. 
Uh, and we have uh, the, uh, a program called the Startup SG Accelerator, where we uh, uh, work directly with incubators, accelerators from around the world right, to uh, uh, set up in Singapore, to set up dedicated programs to help some of these early stage startups. But I think the, the one thing that I, I believe made the most difference right, over the past two, two and a half years sort of, uh, since the pandemic uh, really was um, uh, our Global Innovation Alliance program. And this is the one where uh, we help uh, Singapore-based startups uh, to find uh, international partners uh, to scale up globally. Uh, as, as many of you know, Singapore is a very small market. And in order for our startups to go from sort of a seed to a late stage growth company, they need to fan out as quickly as possible to attain product market fit as quickly as possible. So over the past two years, we've set up uh, what we call uh, GIA nodes. Uh, in uh, about 15 different cities, right, including uh, Jakarta and, and, and Ho Chi Minh. Uh, and since then, uh, we've, we've supported nearly uh, 200 or so uh, startups uh, in these programs all around the world. Uh, and uh, pleasantly surprised to note that nearly 30% of them have managed to secure some kind of commercial investor or uh, talent partnerships in those nodes. Uh, and to do this in a time of COVID, um, you know, to switch from a sort of a, an offline, a face-to-face -face mode to one that is completely digital, uh, that's been uh, something of a, of, a, of a win for us and, and something that uh, I'm particularly proud of. Thank you. Yeah, you must be. Congratulations on that. Mr. Kwat, one policy that you're very proud of that your team and, and you have implemented. Yes. <clears throat> In the context of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the most exciting thing for us uh, over the one and a half of years essentially was the uh, series of the Tech Fest events. The Tech Startup Festival or the National Demo Day for Startup in Vietnam uh, was organized on the internet by the virtual showcase and webinar instead of the traditional showcase uh, and conference. By the traditions uh, from the COVID control orders, the, uh, making uh, these events happen was a great challenge for our team. The initiative encouraging the social entities and the university participating the events under the names of the technology villages was a great idea that uh, helped us overcoming the challenges in the new normal. The uh, topics of TechFest Vietnam in the years of 2021 is uh, embracing innovation, reshaping future. Uh, we have announced the kickoff of the uh, TechFest event with um, 16 technology villages uh, on uh, 15 September. And the final demo day will take place on uh, 15 December of this year. So we hope that uh, the take credit of this year, we will receive a good project, a new model of, from different area, from different technical villages to have the economy, to help the uh, SME to overcome the, uh, the pandemic. Thank you so much, Mr. Quad. And thank you to, to the three of you for coming together today to really share one success and one policy that, that others can learn from. It's been a lot of work for all of you, I know. We've been working with many of you to go through the pandemic and save the ecosystems. And I'm really happy like you that uh, at the end of the day, the ecosystems have, have boomed and thrived uh, in this world where we saw an acceleration to digital economy. So thank you so much, Minister Uno, Mr. Chow and Mr. Kwat, respectively from Indonesia, Singapore and Vietnam. Thank you.